we should begin with the name of Allah, the praise of Allah, and also um, connecting those things also to our Prophet, peace be upon him, by sending salawat on the Prophet, peace be upon him, and then making good intentions so that Allah knows that our action, or whatever good actions that we do today, are connected to a, um, a good intention as well. And this is predicated on the hadith of uh, Omar radiallahu an, who said, in the a'manu bin niya. And then it's a longer hadith, but that's the kind of the famous first part of the hadith that um, verily actions are by their intentions. So inshallah, we always like to begin our day with a good intention and with those things. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad. Na waitu ta'nu ta'aleem wa tadakur wa tadkira wa nafa wal intifa wal ifada ta wal istifada wal hata ala tamasuki bi kitabillah wa sunnati rasulihi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa dua ila al huda wa dalala ta'ala al khair ibtiha wa jhilla wa mardatihi wa kurbihi wa tawabihi subhanahu wa ta'ala. So alhamdulillah. This is our intention to seek knowledge and to benefit others, to remind ourselves and remind others, to serve ourselves with the knowledge and to serve others, to guide to everything that's good, including Allah and the example of His Prophet, peace be upon Him. And the reason and purpose for all of this is that our hope is that Allah be pleased with us, Allah keep us close, and Allah reward us, and Allah is the Most High. So this is all of our collective intention, whether you're going to work, whether you're going to school, whether you're you, any, doing any act of ibadah, anything that requires you to learn and to benefit or to be of service, we hope that Allah accept it from you and that Allah know that we're doing this for His sake, inshallah. So that's the first thing that we begin with. Whether you're going to be coloring today, whether you're going to be doing math problems today, whether you're going to be drawing today, whatever the case may be, that this is what we're, we're doing. And, and for all the mothers at home that are working with their children as well, um, this is a good intention for you as well, that Allah put barakah in your time, put barakah in your efforts as well. So last, uh, we've been talking about a couple of different things over the past couple of weeks. And, um, you know, we've spoken about animals, we've spoken about, um, you know, just family and the home. We've spoken about uh, several different things. Uh, what I was hoping to begin this week is to talk a little bit about Ramadan. So we spoke yesterday about what, um, what one of our teachers, Habib Qadim, shared um, from his teachers that as we enter the month of Ramadan, we should begin listing our intentions for Ramadan, right? Whatever intentions that we have, we should begin listing them and making an intention to act upon them. And they should, obviously they should be all good intentions and we should make a lot of them because Allah has put a lot of barakah in the time in the month of Ramadan. And not only has He put a lot of barakah in the time of the month of Ramadan, but He's also given us all khalwa, right? He's given us all uh, self-isolation this Ramadan. So people will not be spending time driving or commuting or doing other things. They will be in their homes and inshallah um, in, a, in, a, in a place where they can actually focus on themselves and Ramadan. So it actually has the potential to be the most impactful Ramadan that you have had in a very long time because it will be you and it will be Ramadan and, and very little else. So it's a really great opportunity for us to, to actually see where we are at spiritually. Um, so we begin with making our intentions this week, right? As we, before we enter Ramadan, we make all of the intentions that we, we need to make. And then we prepare ourselves to welcome Ramadan. And what our teacher, Habib Umar, he said, that there are a couple of things that you can do in receiving Ramadan. One is that you should begin to feel happy, right? You should begin to change your emotional state. And we have a lot to, to, to be happy for, and, and we should certainly be happy now that Ramadan is coming. So, you know, we talked about how within this pandemic and within all of this anxiety and stress and, and kind of disruption, there are secrets that Allah SWT has, has, has sent and has made available. One of them is that we will be going through this situation while in the month of Ramadan, right? What a blessing that by just being at home and doing what you normally do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can give you tremendous rewards. So as we get into these next few days, begin to increase in your happiness, begin to increase in your joy at the coming of Ramadan. And then he says to begin to prepare yourself and your surroundings to be wary of things that would distract you from Ramadan, right? 
So maybe this is a good opportunity, you know, if you were binge watching a television show or doing other things, that this is a good opportunity for you to uh, perhaps, uh, you know, stop for a few days or for a few weeks. Or if it's a cartoon game or video games or things like that, things that you are doing a lot of, maybe this is a good opportunity for you to um, slow down a little bit. And anything that might be a distraction, social media, um, friends, activities that might be a distraction from your ibadah, start to begin to schedule your life so that those things are a little bit limited. And then lastly, right, itemize and plan all of the good works that you plan to do in the month of Ramadan now. So think about it. Think about all of the good deeds, all of the good things that you uh, may have in your intention list and start to plan on how you can fulfill those things, right? And then lastly, one thing that I would just add for all of the youngest kids is that they can begin to do arts and crafts and decorate the home and do all of those things that, um, that will make the home a lively and enjoyable place. So, you know, start to decorate the home and the families that are there that are listening. Ramadan should still feel very much like Ramadan, right? Ramadan is connected to our spiritual state, our heart, our joy, our happiness. It's connected to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we could be in our homes, or we could be in the masjid, or we could be somewhere else, but Ramadan will remain. So this is a great week to begin to make drawings and arts and crafts and decorate, uh, let the children decorate their rooms um, and decorate parts of the houses and um, maybe plan to make a, you know, at least a few meals in the month of Ramadan they can make with the family. But certainly allow the children to make um, Ramadan special in the home. And this is part of, you know, for the adults as well, a good form of therapy, right? And you'll see how children are very resilient and they can find joy even in the most difficult of circumstances. So this is our nasiha, right? One is to begin making your intention list. One is to, the second is to begin feeling really a sense of joy and happiness at the coming of Ramadan. Third is that we begin to prepare our lives and our friends and our entertainment and our schedules. Um, so that things that might distract us from Ramadan, we start to decrease those things and limit them. And then the last few things that we mentioned is that we begin to prepare and uh, schedule our life to do good deeds in the month of Ramadan. Um, and then finally that we can decorate the home and decorate our, 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 our family's um, uh, living space and prayer space so that it reflects um, the happiness of Ramadan. Um, I hope that there's some benefit in all of that. So the youngest kids, right, for the kids in kindergarten and first grade and pre-K and lower elementary and elementary and, um, and any grade beyond that, their homework assignment is to begin, begin to decorate their homes and their rooms for Ramadan, right? That should be an activity for all of you. For the parents, right, for the parents is to really just prepare our lives and our schedules. And this is what we're going to talk about tomorrow. Today we talked a little bit more towards the younger kids. Tomorrow we'll talk more towards the middle and high school and adults about oh, the things that we need to do to prepare for Ramadan and how, how we prepare affects the children in our lives as well. So everyone, inshallah, I hope that you have a blessed day today. Inshallah, if you are in school, you know that you learn one big thing. You know, you learn at least one big thing about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's world. And, um, and that you put barakah in it. And the biggest thing that you can do after learning that big thing is to share it. Share it with your family over dinner, share it with your teachers, and, and, and be happy that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow you to learn something new today. And then finally, you know, for our older students, like we always remind you, you have a great responsibility and great spiritual aptitude. Um, before you begin your day, make a personal du'a for yourself and your family, and inshallah Allah put barakah in your time. So everyone at work, I pray that you have a blessed day and, and put barakah in your wealth. Those of you who are at home, uh, working from home or teaching your children from home, we pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala put barakah in your effort and in your time. And those of you who are learning from home and studying from home, that Allah put barakah in your knowledge and your intellect. And those of us who are teaching from home, that Allah give us patience and tawfiq and put, um, put himma in our limbs, inshallah. All right, I hope that everyone has a happy day and a good day. Inshallah, we'll see you guys tomorrow, 8.45. Those of you who are joining our Sanat free classes, Inshallah, um, you're, you're, you're welcome to, to speak to your learning coaches in a few minutes. If anybody is interested in joining the Sanat free classes, the registration is available on our website. If anyone is interested in enrolling in Sanat prep for next academic year, that information is also available on our website. Inshallah, we'll see everyone tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.